Well, it's muscadine grape season, and since I've not had a chance to make wine from grapes before, I figure this will be an excellent opportunity to try my hand at it. Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. To make our muscadine wine, we will be using the following. I've got about three pounds or 40 ounces of muscadine grapes. I've got two and a half pounds or about five cups of sugar. We will be making adjustments to that later on. We're going to need about a gallon of water, well, way less than that, but enough water to give us one gallon of, of wine. We'll be using a Red Star Premier Classic wine yeast because of the way it brings out the natural flavors and essences of a red wine. We're going to need a straining bag because we are going to be straining these grapes of their juice. We will not be using the grape skins or the grape pulp in making this batch of wine. We're going to need a one gallon or four liter container to do our primary fermentation in. We're going to need an airlock with stopper. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to rack it or transfer our wine from our primary into our secondary container to get it off a lot of the lease that has settled to the bottom. So, of course, we're going to need another, another carboy. Now, it would be nice to know the alcoholic content of our wine when we're finish and also the amount of sugar we need to put in going in. So I'm going to be using a hydrometer with two. And last but certainly not least, everything, all carboys, utensils, tools, everything is going to be sanitized using your sanitizer of choice. Right now I'm still using Star Sand. So that will make sure that everything going into the mix is going to be clean. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Now to make these grapes a little bit easier to crush up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in the freezer and let them firm up, if not freeze, and then thaw them out and crush them up later. Now my plan is going to be this. I'm going to take about a handful of these thawed out berries, which are now softened, and for two. Remove any stems that you might see because you're not going to be needing them. I just get a small amount into a bowl. And I could smash them with my hands because they're now soft enough. But I think I'm going to use a masher. Berries are still, surprisingly, firm. But the juice is being extracted. All right, so yeah, it might be kind of a slow process, but it will get done. All right, let's get these into a straining bag. Now, though, I do plan on filling up the bag later on. The general process is this, get it in the bag, strain out some more additional juice. Now just remember everything has been properly sanitized and so hands are clean, they've been sanitized as well. But you want to squeeze out all the juice. And get ready for the next batch and repeat the process. Now that we're in the kitchen, we need to do a few things. One, we want to bring up about half of our water to boil. Trying to get as much in the pot as possible. I mean, you don't have to be precise because we are putting in four cups of sugar and two cups of juice. And anything we come up short, we'll simply add in the rest of our water. But right now, we just want to bring this up to a boil so that we can put in our sugar. To help, the hot water will help it dissolve a bit more easily. And in the meantime, 
I can clean up this mess I just made. <laughs> now that our water has come to a boil, we can go ahead and start adding our sugar. Now go ahead and add in our juice. And let's give that a little stir. We don't need the heat anymore. We can just turn that off. our cover back on and wait for that to come down to room temperature. Now that our juice has come down to room temperature, we need to begin the process of moving it from our pot to our carboy. And I don't think I'm just going to pour it in there all at once. I think I'll just scoop it out and pour it in a little bit at a time. Slowly getting there. We're that sh much short from where we need to be. We we'll go ahead and add in some more of our water to bring our level up. I don't want it too high because we need to take a hydrometer reading, and if our reading is way low, we need to add more sugar, and I want to have space for to add the additional sugar. So. Let me take a hydrometer reading. All right, the hydrometer reading came in at 1.090, which is within that 1.080, 1.090 range. So I think it's safe for me to go ahead and add the additional water to bring our level up. And then we'll take another hydrometer reading. All right, our new hydrometer reading is 1.082. All that remains to be done now is to add our quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. And let's go ahead and put our airlock on. It's now time to label our creation. We are currently making Muscadine wine. And we started making it on this date. And our starting gravity was again 1.082. Now, of course, over the next several months, there are going to be several rackings before we get to degassing and then bottling and pasteurization and all of that. The wine will more than likely end up being dry so we can back sweeten it at the end of the process. But there we go. That is how I'm going to make one gallon of muscadine wine. Okay, it's now been 12 months since we uh, last left the uh, initial part of the making of this uh, Muscadine wine. Uh, it's now time to do that taste test. Uh, from the onset, I can honestly say that uh, uh, Muscadine wine, born 8 2021, uh, AVB alcohol by volume came in at 11.55%, which is a good range. And as I like to say, it's been pasteurized. Okay, oh, speaking of which, when you hear me say it's been pasteurized, it's because I don't use sulfites on this channel. I mean, I just don't. Uh, I prefer a more naturalistic style of wine, although I do cheat using wine yeast instead of uh, natural yeast, which I have done before. Um, I'm trying to keep it as natural as possible. And one way of ensuring that you can stabilize your wine is to pasteurize it. Uh, the only downside to pasteurizing versus using a, a wine stabilizer, sulfites, is that uh, you reduce the amount of shelf life that your wine will, will last. 
uh, generally this is about two years. Some have gone longer, but basically you can realistically expect two years. That having been said, uh, we're going to get right into this one. Um, here in the Carolinas, when I was looking to make a muscadine wine, we didn't have muscadine grapes here locally. Uh, I was doing a trip to uh, Florida uh, that we stopped by one of the local grocery stores and uh, they had a, a bin full of muscadine grapes. So I ended up buying enough for two batches of, of muscadine wine. Not having made muscadine wine before, of course, I'm just going to make like half half of it in case in case this doesn't work out. Um, but if it does, I've got another batch left uh, to go ahead and get that started. Um, let's get. You always have to do that initial sniff test because you never can tell. <laughs> it smells sweet. Uh, this wine. Um, stop it there. Uh, this wine. Uh, just from uh, notes that I took, uh, this wine went very uh, clear in the carboy very early on, so it was bottled very early on. Uh, it was degassed, uh, back sweetened, bottled, pasteurized, corked, <laughs> labeled uh, some months ago. So I really don't remember what this thing tasted like uh, until we do the tasting now. So let's pour us a decent glass here. If we're going to like it, we're going to like it. If we're not, we're not. Let's see what we got first on the nose. I had to give it that second deep inhale. Um, it, it is not alcohol forward at 11.5%. You really shouldn't expect it to be. It does still smell sweet by virtue of the fact that I back sweetened it sweet. Um, sweet as opposed to dry. <laughs> Uh, so you're not really getting that alcohol unless you inhale deeply. Well, let's see what it tastes like. It yeah, it tastes good. Only thing I'm seeing that needs to be adjusted uh, is the amount of acidity. Uh, I don't remember if I was, I think it, yeah, 2021, I think I had already adjusted my uh, acidity uh, downward. I used to, when I first started, I was using a whole lemon uh, as my uh, acid blend substitute, and I reduced that by to a half a lemon. These days, I'm using a quarter of a lemon uh, uh, to give me the acidity that I need. But in this one, I mean, it's not like heavily acidic, but you can tell that a, a slight reduction in the amount of lemon juice <laughs> is in order. But other than that, I mean, it's not a showstopper for this at all. <laughs> this tastes good. Yeah, this tastes good. Uh, I'm glad I saved the other uh, half batch of uh, muscadine grapes. They're still sitting in my freezer uh, from last year. Uh, I'm definitely going to make another batch. See if muscadine uh, grapes can be paired with uh, some other fruit and make a combination. Uh, in my next batch of wine, I've got enough for another gallon. Um, Tone down the acidity, give it a little bit more time. Uh, this was 12 months. Uh, it's, it's definitely drinkable at 12 months. Um, uh, I'm not gonna have any problems with finishing off this bottle. Uh, might not be able to do it tonight because it is getting kind of late. <laughs> it's like just after 10, 10 p.m. <laughs> I decided to do this video. So this will be, uh, this will be in the refrigerator. I don't even think it needs to be in the refrigerator. Well, uh, this will be set aside and I'll probably finish this off sometime tomorrow -ish, tomorrow evening. As far as this one glass is concerned, yep, tone down the acidity just a bit. Oh, when I 
when I make adjustments, like when I suggest that I'm going to tone down the acidity or, 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 or adjust the amount of tannin or um, things of that nature, it basically means that I'm going to go back to the original video and make the adjustment in the uh, uh, description of the video where I have the ingredients and make a modification and it'll say modified on such and such a date. Uh, now that I'm combining videos, it'll be in this video where I have the uh, list of ingredients and I'll make the modification to suggest using only a quarter of a lemon uh, instead of whatever it was that I used before. But apart from that, no, just as a standalone, just by the muscadine grapes themselves, yeah, this makes a pretty decent wine. I know the muscadine grapes themselves had a much deeper color than this. This one ends up looking more like a, like a rosé, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, it's not heavily fruit forward. Again, it's not heavily alcohol forward either. It's a very light tasting wine. Uh, yeah, it's a very light tasting wine. Uh, if you've not made muscadine wine before, you're looking for something that quite honestly, uh, as long as you <laughs> take the proper necessary step precautions for keeping everything properly clean and sanitized throughout the entire process, uh, I suggest give it a try if you can get your hands on some muscadine grapes. So uh, trying to keep this one again as short as possible. Uh, that's my take on making this batch of muscadine wine. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's worth the effort. Well, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons. As I'm always saying in each and every one of my videos, better yet, become a member, help support this channel because muscadine crepes, especially when you have to fly to Florida to get them, are cheap. Um, or better yet, become a Patreon. Uh, there's not really, Patreon is not really content heavy. It's more of a way of simply allowing you to provide uh, support for this channel. Uh, Again, uh, in the original video, everything that you've seen me use, you can find uh, links to those in the Amazon section, which again is in the uh, description and comment sections uh, of the video. So until then, uh, next video, I'll see you.